You are now listening to part number two of module 14, Are You Addicted? If this is the first part of module 14 you're listening to, please stop and go back to part number one. We are now going to look at six potential reasons of why a person may stay addicted to their mask. Notice the words that I'm using there, potential reasons, and may stay addicted to their mask. Because when we're looking at the term around addiction here, it requires a lot of introspection if we're going to get to the bottom of it. Masks and the addiction to masks can be incredibly complex. Everything within the mind has structure. Again, just because we can't see that structure doesn't mean it's not there. But when it comes to addictions, it's absolutely vital that all the steps are taken to work around it. And just to add something in there, if you ever read in a book or an audio training program or anything like that, and you're getting that advice from somebody who does not know your exact situation, does not know your backstory, does not know your history, and they in any way tell you what you should be doing to overcome an addiction, then in my opinion, that is very unprofessional and very dangerous advice. I'm not saying that you should follow what I've just said there, or shouldn't. It's your life and your choice. But after working with addictions for many years now, I've seen what can happen if people start messing around with addictions, but do not prepare for it first. One analogy that I want to give you is that imagine you're led in bed and it's really dark and your eyes have adjusted to the darkness and you're sat there quite relaxed. And then somebody switches on the light. And imagine it's a really bright light. If you imagine that scenario right there, what is the first thing you're going to do? You're going to screw your eyes tightly shut, cover your eyes, and then you're going to hide under the duvet. Why? Because you're trying to protect your eyes from the really bright light. Now, yes, of course, if you're led there in bed and that light suddenly gets switched on, it's going to be overwhelming for your eyes. But what if you do it gradually and let your eyes adjust to that change in light? It's much easier. So keep that in mind all the time when working through with addictions. Sudden changes can be like switching on a bright light in a dark room. The masks and the addiction to the mask is there for a reason. It's your protector self still trying to balance the equation. Which is again why I keep saying all the way through, sudden changes consciously will trigger your protector self to fight back. So the six potential reasons that a person could stay addicted to a mask are as follows. I'm going to go over an overview first, and then we're going to take a deeper look at each one. Reason number one, it is all that you have ever known. Reason number two, a lack of psychological knowledge. Reason number three, it hurts to let go. Reason number four, keeping up with the Joneses. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, I'll explain more when we get there. Reason number five. It's easy to stay comfortable. And reason number six, and one of the most powerful ones of all, there are too many other people supporting the addiction. So first, reason number one, it is all you have ever known. So imagine a person growing up on a private island where everybody is taught that two plus two equals five. Just like it was with Joe, when he moved to the big city. Now, if that's all they've ever been taught, they're going to believe that is correct, but obviously that doesn't mean it's correct. But there can be so much more around this. People can be born into a culture and to gain acceptance from that culture, they could have their masks. Anybody that drops below the line into addictions of fight, flight or freeze and any of those fight, flight or freeze actions could be emotional currency. And we can see this very often where people might get connection through gossip or criticising each other or judging. We can definitely see this on social media. If you look through the comments on some of the posts that are out there, 
one person will criticize something and then many other people jump on to that person's comment and agree with them, which again is a mask, it's an attack. But if that is all that person has ever known and they believe that that is the only way that they can get connection, although it is a mask of the conditioned self, they will keep repeating it. And this is why it's so vital when we are studying about emotional education or self-awareness to study lots of different authors, lots of different trainers. Because with a broad spectrum of different training methods, it can open our minds to whole new levels. So one question I always suggest everybody to ask themselves around reason number one, it's all you've ever known is were there any values of the culture that you grew up in which were masks and if you look back on them now you realize that they were masks even though they might have been very detractive away from what you wanted to achieve for example it could be a person growing up in an impoverished environment which i definitely did and i actually started feeling guilty about earning money and working less hours and I felt if I did that, that I would be turning my back on the people that I grew up with. Reason number two, a lack of psychological knowledge. Now this is obviously something that you're working hard on right now by even listening to this program. And obviously I'm sure you're listening to other programs as well. But how often in life do people ever receive that emotional or psychological education in their school or even university? That is, unless they've specifically asked. But then we've got to take that level deeper. Because is the information that they are learning practical? I mean, practical as in, can they apply it to their life for practical benefit? You see, learning the history of Freud's birthday is totally pointless. As mentioned earlier, though, this isn't ever to criticise any education system. That education system is doing what it does, but it's also our responsibility to learn about what we want to learn as we leave school. But as another way to look at it, if we haven't received that advice and structure of how to understand ourselves or how to communicate with other people, I always see that it'd be similar to a person who isn't quite too sure how to drive because they've never been taught how to but then given a top-of-the-range Ferrari or a Lamborghini, for example, as soon as they get behind the wheel of that car and start the ignition, they're going to feel poorly prepared and probably very unsure of the car's ability and probably very unsure of their abilities to drive that car. And then what happens when they are driving down the road and they are not too sure what to do and then they may, for example, go into freeze mode and cannot think clearly. But how many of us are expected to just go and drive that car and drive it very successfully? How many of us in this world are expected to have a, quote, successful life, but we've never been taught how to understand ourselves? Yet still, we are expected to have a successful life. And as we know, there are many people in this world who are doing their very best just to make it through each day, but feeling very overwhelmed at the same time. Okay, reason number three that a person could stay addicted to their mask, it hurts to let go. Now, letting go of an addiction in any area can create a pain or discomfort within the mind unless some replacement measures or to rebalance the trauma are put in place. Even then, working through that can sometimes be a challenge. For many people, the longer they have been addicted to their mask, the harder it can feel to let go of. Notice what I said there, the harder it can feel to let go of. We become comfortable with that mask, it feels secure. And then sometimes in a person's life, as it did with me, that addiction of the mask become so tightly interwoven with that person's world that they don't even realise it's a mask. Back to the sugar and salt. How many people in this world who continually check social networking sites or constantly text their partner, constantly contact their staff unnecessarily, or feel the need to constantly buy things, would actually go on a detox with no replacement for the mask? 
Although a lot of people would say, yes, I will, the truth is not many people really do. Or they might do it for a short period of time, but then soon enough they subscribe back to that mask. Why? Because it causes pain and the mind will always move away from pain. In workshops when I'm talking around this area, I suggest it sometimes for students to do for an evening or maybe even a few hours. Most people come back and explain that their mind was a flood of excuses of why they have to check in with their partner, why they have to check their social messaging sites. And as we can now see, the reason if they don't is because it brings up that discomfort. So for reason number three, have a reflect on how it would feel for you, for any of the masks that you have, for giving them up for half an hour, or an hour, or even a day. Your conscious mind might say, yes, I can do that, but reflect on it. And I want to add in there, because this is very important, I'm asking you to think about stopping the addiction. And this is another reason why I always explain if you are going to look at changing any addictions in any way, whether it be alcohol or narcotics or working long hours, make sure that you take all the preparation you need before making changes. Okay, moving on to reason number four, which is keeping up with the Joneses. Now, I don't know if this phrase is all over the world, but it definitely is in the UK. And it basically means that there are two houses next to each other. In one house lives the Smiths, and in the other house live the Joneses. And then one day, the Joneses get a £50,000 car, for example. And then the Smiths, feeling that they don't look as good as the Joneses now, buy a car that's £55,000. But then the Joneses decide to go to the Bahamas for a three-week vacation. But then the Smiths feel that they have to go on an even more expensive holiday. The reason being, they don't want to look lesser than the Joneses family. And then the Joneses go and do something else, and the Smiths try to keep up with them. So basically the phrase keeping up with the Joneses means that a person does not want to feel inferior to other people who they see in society or on social media who have more or do more than they do. And I'll heavily emphasize on social media. It is a well-known behavior pattern that many people in this world will try to outdo each other in life. Now, if a person naturally wants to achieve something, then that's very healthy. But the area that we're talking about here is when a person has a drive to succeed, but only to prove that they are as good as another person around them, or sometimes better than other people around them. Now, as we can see, this goes directly back to a shame self-image where a person says, I am not good enough but then gets external validation from what I do. So if, for example, a person doesn't believe they're good enough in who they are, but then has a million pounds, for example, in what I do, then if somebody next door has 1.5 million pounds, then that person who has a million pounds might feel inferior. So then they get 2 million pounds. But then the person next door, the Joneses, gets three million pounds, to which the person at Smith's feels inferior again and gets the next level up. And it never stops. But always keep this in mind. Any time we trace our self-esteem through external validation, it is no different than a cat trying to chase a laser around the room. The cat will jump on the laser thinking it's caught the laser, but obviously it looks under its paws and it's not there. And I tried this for many years, by the way. I went for the aim of the corporate world, or the physical ability world, or the money world. And no matter what I achieved, it never felt any different on the inside. Which is what I mentioned right at the start of the program. I went through the self-acclaimed gurus and achieve your goals. And I achieved a lot in the external world. But it never changed me on the inside and this is obviously where the contractors can easily step in. 
We see people on TV with the perfect abs and the perfect weight and the perfect car and the perfect whatever. And especially when celebrities get involved. Those celebrities who appear to have it all. The rich and famous people who we should all aspire to be like. And then they sell their books on their perfect diet plan and how to lose weight or how to succeed in whatever area of their life. Just because somebody is a celebrity on TV does not mean that their advice is good. Back to module three. Are things as they appear? Question everything. Although many people, especially online, post images of a very successful life that they're having and they are unique and don't follow the crowd, in my personal opinion, and doing many, many years of research on this, I have seen many of those people who claim that they are unique and don't follow the crowd living the exact opposite way that they are claiming. Unless a person starts to wake up to the con, and realise their mask is an addiction, and then to face their underlying trauma, it can sometimes be very comfortable to create a belief, well, my friends are doing it, my family's doing it, celebrities are doing it, so why shouldn't I? Because, after all, we wouldn't want to separate from the pack and be different, i.e. all alone, would we? But then we can tie that back to reason number one, it's all we've ever known. You see, if we've been in a social ecosystem where everybody's doing the same thing, then it could, in our subconscious mind, be a reality that if we do something different, apart from our mask, then the only world that we have ever known will abandon us and we will be alone. Which is why you can see people all over the world who are very, very intelligent people still stay addicted to their mask. Because it's not necessarily what's going on in the conscious mind, but what is going on in the subconscious mind. Okay, reason number five. It's easy to stay comfortable. Now anybody who's ever started an exercise regime will know that it can feel like the body is not really that comfortable doing exercise until that habit pattern takes over. Now this is back to that pain gratification cycle, which is always again, remember, the protector self will always move away from what it sees as pain. A body which is not used to exercising will feel discomfort when it's forced to move beyond its current limitations. But once that habit takes over, the feel-good factor hormones are flowing, exercise can become much more pleasurable. That is, for example, unless there was something much deeper going on behind the scenes. Which, as we know, there can very often be layers beyond layers beyond layers. Now, this in many ways is similar with the mind. Yes, we all have a desire to grow and be our true selves. But like electricity, our mind will always do its best to get there in the quickest possible manner. Which is, taking the most effective route. But sometimes, quicker is not more effective. If the habit of a mask is the most practiced habit in that person's mind, then it will be a very strong bond. Hence, changing any habit of using a mask in the initial stages is going to feel challenging, especially if the protector self feels that changing that mask without any alternative solution is going to draw you closer towards that thing that it's trying to hide the mind from. And this is why, in life, when a person is under pressure or overwhelmed, The quickest assumed way to survive our discomfort underneath is to do what is easy. See, changing habits take time and sometimes they're very uncomfortable to do. And we have to build that discipline of being uncomfortable. And this is where the contricksters step in and take advantage. You see, so many people in this world are sold that, by now, pay later attitude. We've all seen the adverts. Lose 10 pounds of body fat in one week with only 10 minutes of exercise whilst eating whatever you like. Or become debt free by taking this nation loan. Blah, blah, blah. And yes, that might sound quite patronising to those statements and I'm intending it to be so. Because they are a con. You see, you're not going to lose 10 pounds of body fat in one week only exercising 10 minutes a day and eating whatever you want. Or if you do, 
your body will go through hell and back doing so, and it will probably gain it back soon enough. And it's very unlikely that you're going to be debt free by taking a consolidation loan by somebody who is paying for adverts on social media. I remember somebody saying to me once, and I believe this completely, they said, if something sounds too good to be true, it is. Not probably, it is too good to be true. Now, if we go back to what we started sharing right at the very start of this program, these kind of products, these quick fix options, are offered to those people in the world who are under immense amounts of pressure. Those people who are waking up at 3am, terrified that their life is falling to bits or they are overwhelmed with anxiety and just do not know what to do because they are so overwhelmed. And as we now know, it is a person when they're in that state who is open and vulnerable to the con. Again, last but definitely not least, reason number six and a very dark one. Too many other people in our social ecosystem support the addiction of the mask. And make sure you write this down because of all of the six reasons, this really is a very powerful one. Now for this, we may take a slightly paranoid view, but it's a very real view of the world for some people. For some people with a mask, an effective way of reducing their anxiety, so they hope and believe, is for example to buy new clothes to change their appearance. Buying a new wardrobe of clothes creates that feel-good factor and gives them that rest from that internal anxiety. It also offers them a distraction because it's a mask. It also offers a distraction from the feeling that underneath they may perceive themselves to be worth less because that centre circle believes it's not good enough. So they then externally validate through clothing. Now, if you take a person in that scenario, how many shopkeepers and shops out there are ready to take a person in this position's hard-earned cash in exchange for that shiny set of clothes? That when they have those clothes, it seems to make all of their anxiety simply vanish. Well, as we know, that will be temporarily, but the anxiety is going to come back soon enough. But what about if we take two people and we start to introduce codependence here? We could take person number one, who is feeling very alone and wants somebody to care for them because they believe underneath that nobody ever wants to be around them. And then if we take person number two, who feels exactly the same way. Now what then, if person number two starts to say to person number one, I will be there for you in every way, shape and form. I will care for your every need. We then have to ask the question, Are they saying that because they really mean it, or are they wanting that person to feel dependent upon them to feel safe? Or again, as discussed, what about those employees who want to impress their peers so they feel accepted through their work? How many managers or owners of companies would offer praise because they realise that their staff work much harder on long hours, which then creates huge profits for the company? Now, what I've just shared there can sound quite dark and manipulative. And yes, there are people out there who are living that way in that codependent cycle. But obviously, it's never to insinuate that everybody does this. Buying clothes, for example, or getting praise may be from a true self-creative expression. Also, as mentioned, and I will keep mentioning all the way through this program, that in my own opinion and research... The great majority of people out there who do meet other people's needs in a codependent way have no conscious awareness that they're doing it at all, but it is a learned program from their past. Codependent relationships can be extremely draining on both parties' self-esteem. Keep in mind at all times, if we stay addicted to that external validation, it's going to be taking energy away from that sense of circle, who I am. Then, even though both people might feel that they are getting that high from each other, as time progresses, the more they attempt to help each other and support each other through external validation without realising it, the more trapped they both become in the contract. They don't realise they're conning each other. They don't know that they're conning each other. The good people, they just want to help each other out. 
and this is why psychological education is absolutely vital. However, this is where we can see the tango get deeper and deeper, because the more they help each other, the more the alleged pain or anxiety seems to reduce. So those are the six potential reasons of why a person may become addicted to their mask. Like say that last one about the codependence, for me, as a trainer from all of the years research I've ever done, that is one of the hardest ones to break. Because if two people are externally validating each other's mask, although they might feel really good while they're doing it, they are also weakening that I state in each other without realizing it. Let's now take a deeper look at the codependency within a mask and the addiction. Now, I want to emphasize again that the vast majority of people who are caught up in the con and projecting it onto each other, most people are not aware of what they're doing. So they have that deeper trauma underneath and then they create a mask. And then that mask is to cover up that trauma. And then that mask could be codependently linked with other people's masks who are also in a state of trauma. So very often this codependent con and mask addiction is going on behind the scenes in a subconscious world. So then if we take a look at what we discussed earlier, the shopkeeper of the clothes shop, they may feel that they are more valuable to other people in society, external validation, through the more clothes they sell. However, they may feel, may, possibly, could do, they may feel that the more clothes they sell, the more they avoid their anxiety. I run a very successful shop selling clothes, so then my mask is more secure because I am good enough for what I do. So then they will want to sell more clothes and therefore they will look for customers who are more eager to buy, which means they are looking for customers who are easier target to buy what they're selling. If the easier target customers are those people who will buy through their mask a certain way, which is external validation rather than who I am, then this subconsciously could be that shopkeeper's focus, which again now we can see as a codependent contract for both people. These are not evil narcissists gaslighting each other. They are just people trying to get by their daily life while covering up their anxiety. But unfortunately, obviously out there, there are some businesses that do know what they are doing and they are tapping into people's insecurity. And this is why some clothing manufacturers can offer the same cheap material, but put that well-known fashion label on it and then just triple the price. I remember a while ago when I was in a shop in the UK and I saw a simple cotton t-shirt and it was 65% polyester, 35% cotton, and it cost £380. Just out of curiosity, I was never going to buy that, but just out of curiosity, I actually tried on that t-shirt and it wasn't the nicest feeling t-shirt at all. But obviously because it had that fashion label on it, a lot of people would have still bought it. In the second example above, we saw two people who are both feeling alone and that nobody wants to be with them. So person number two played the, I will be there for you and be anything you want me to be with person one. And obviously because person one was feeling alone and wanted somebody to be there for them. Again, both people might be completely unaware of what's going on. They might have that very low self-esteem because the sense circle who I am is seen as not good enough. They are externally validating by taking an action or a behavior of being there for somebody else. And this is how a lot of romantic relationships can become codependent. And in the third example, we saw the manager who lavishes praise upon their employee who chooses to work 80 hours in a week. Now, if we take a deeper look at this, it could be that the manager has low self-esteem themselves and they want to feel valued and respected. So if they give praise to their employee, the employee might see the manager as a pseudo-parent and then give that connection to the manager. 
then the manager may feel that their words are important and valued by another person. So looking at this in a different way now, it's plain to see that using the words con and con trickster can now take on a whole new meaning. And as I've mentioned earlier, it may not be as sinister and dark as it may first have sounded. But I needed to word it in a cold way to get the message across that we can become addicted to the mask. In many cases, the reality for people doing the above actions, and many others, is usually simply that they're just trying to get by in life. They have a trauma, the mask covers up the trauma, they subscribe to the mask because it gives them that respite from their anxiety. Yet the truth is that whether they are consciously aware of what they are doing or not, if a person is taking those actions from the driver of the mask, the codependency con will still be being played out. Here, ignorance is not bliss. So once again, it is all about recognising each individual situation and analysing it as an individual situation. We can have one person who is a manipulator. They know what they're doing. They know that they are getting their target to focus on what makes them insecure and then taking advantage of that. Yes, it will be coming from an underlying trauma, but if they are consciously aware of what they're doing, then that is clearly wrong. But again, for most people who are caught in this codependent con, it's just that they don't realise they have a trauma underneath, they subscribe to their mask, their mask gives them that sense of peace away from their constant anxiety, so they keep going for that hit. Unless they choose to work on their trauma, or change the mask into a more healthy one, they will still be in that codependent loop until things are changed. They will stay addicted to that mask. Separating the sugar and salt now we have a whole module on this around creating a cocoon, but just to give you an introduction here. The message which I want to get across here is that we do have options and we don't have to suffer from low self-esteem if we don't want to. But I am fully aware that what I've just shared there is much easier said than done. There can be so many things that we have to work through if we want to get to that place where we can be our true selves. We might be physically exhausted, overwhelmed with anxiety-based thoughts, caught up in a social ecosystem that makes it very difficult to get time by ourselves. And that's just to name a few. But if we work through the process in the right way for us, the end result can be that we don't have to suffer from a sense of guilt if we choose to say no to something that we don't want to do. When you learn how to control a mask, you control the con attached to it. Then, you can stop the con and the addiction by altering your perception of life by releasing the Pandora's box memories. Again though, there is a lot more to this area than meets the eye. And if you're going to work through it, is going to require a lot of careful introspection. But the one thing that you will notice, if you do choose to step out of the mask and stop the addiction, for you, your mask world would stop. But for other people's worlds who are addicted to the mask, shops will continue to offer their sale and today products. Weight loss products with images of scrawny beach bodies will still pack the shelves and other situations will continue to try to emotionally control and guilt trip people to get what they want. Life for everybody else wearing the mask will be exactly the same. If you let go of your own mask and start functioning from your true self, life for everybody else wearing the mask will be the same. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always got. But the one difference will be in your world. When you create that balance between your subconscious and conscious mind, you won't need a mask to hide pain, because you won't be reacting anymore. If you get to that stage, you will no longer be able to be guilt-tripped, manipulated or conned. In the story of the sugar and salt from the introduction, it was the salt that gave power and energy, 
but the sugar took it away and made life a lot more difficult for the king and queen. But if the mask has been mixed together in your world for so long, how would you even know the difference, unless you start to reflect upon that? The sugar is the con, the salt is your freedom of choice. Keep in mind at all times, if the emotional pain is too great for your protector self, the protector self will always seek the quickest end to pain, and if that's your mask, it will turn to your mask. And if that mask is buying a £40,000 car or desperately craving the praise from your manager, then the cheque is signed or the extra hours are worked. Another con that we have to look at though is that that sugar tastes so very nice. Remember that we looked at before on the reasons that we can sometimes stay addicted to the mask. Sometimes it can be uncomfortable to give up meaning that our mask can be very, very comfortable. But to share a question that I asked myself when I started to realise this, what if I don't want to give up on the addiction of my mask? What will I lose? And the answer was, my freedom of choice. A refusal to give up on the addiction to external acquirements or what I do, that is driven from low self-esteem, will take away your freedom of choice. Remember, every time we subscribe to that what I do, instead of strengthening the who I am, it makes your self-esteem weaker. Now from the outset, the phrase freedom of choice may not sound too serious, but take a moment to really think about this. Number one. Your Pandora's box mind is suppressing an emotion which it feels is too much for you to cope with. Again, that could be trapped in time. You might easily be able to cope with it now, but if your protector self still thinks you're maybe five years old, it will keep suppressing it. Number two, while it's suppressed, it will create distorted images upon your internal cinema screen. Number three, Your protector self will then begin to react to these distorted images to protect you, going into fight, flight or freeze, which is the mask. Number four, your internal physical stress will constantly be released and grow due to the confusion of your protector self keep reacting to these old internal images. Number five, Your protector self will then aim to conceal your physical stress by the use of the mask, a distraction technique. Number six, whilst the emotional pain at stage three of the self-esteem recovery model remains suppressed within the mind, the protector self will continue to trigger the mask. Number seven, If we then consciously attempt to change that habit pattern of the mask covering up the deeper trauma, your protector self will then see that as a threat, believing your conscious mind is actually going to bring you harm. Number eight, eventually your conscious mind will be overpowered and the mask will be back in control. Did it just come to your attention that I've said this many times already through the program? Well, that's because I have said it many times throughout the program. Repetition really is key here. But what if you're still not convinced about what I just shared there? Well, what about the workaholic who says they will change and make a choice to work less, only to be back in their overworked state after three weeks? Or what about the compulsive dieter who loses weight only to gain it back year after year? They lose it, they gain it, they lose it. This is where the term yo-yo dieting comes from. Or what about the narcotic drug addict who promises their children that they will never touch it again, but they end up using again? Or what about the millions of people who set New Year's resolutions only to quit by February? Or what about the person with social anxiety who visualises and meditates about having higher levels of confidence, but within a month, feels like they failed miserably because they haven't changed. Or what about the sex addict who still chooses to accept sexual offers from other people even though they may contract a life-threatening STI? Or what about the millions of people who aim to give up smoking with willpower 
but weeks later, or even days later, starts smoking again. Or what about the person who really wants to be in a relationship, but keeps choosing the wrong person? Now I'm sure you can see that I could go on and on and on about these experiences, but I think you get the message across. As we can see now, that list could be endless. So back again to the freedom of choice. The person may not consciously want to do any of the actions that we've just gone through above, but they feel subconsciously compelled to. And this is because, as with any addiction, there is always an anxiety that one day that external acquirement, or the mask which hides perceived low self-worth, will disappear and not be able to protect them. And then the very thing that they are subconsciously reluctant to face will be laid bare for the entire world to see. And in most cases, a person may not consciously be aware of what that deep underlying trauma is. They may just feel a deep sense of dread. Underneath it could be, I have to check my emails a hundred times a day, or I will have to listen to the anxiety that people don't want to talk to me. Or, I have to work 70 hours a week, or people will think I'm lazy. Or, I have to spend all my money on weight loss products because I am anxious of people that will reject me because of my physical shape. Or, I have to buy the latest phone, even though I don't have the money, just so I fit into my social group. Or, I have to run my own business and be self-employed as opposed to being employed, so people see me as a leader. And just to add in there, I've been self-employed for many, many years now, and although a lot of people say they want to run their own business, there's a lot of people who go self-employed and come crashing down because they have not prepared. So just a word of advice there. Running your own business requires a lot of preparation. It's not just so easy just to go and going self-employed. Or, what about the person who says, I have to have sex with many, many people, even though I don't want to, just so I feel wanted. And I've obviously mentioned there about sex a couple of times, and the reason I just want to share that is because having physical sex with a person, the act of having sex with another person, can sometimes be totally emotionally disconnected. But, a person might feel that having sex with somebody might make the other person want them more. There's a big difference between having sex with somebody and making love. But what about the person who says, I have to listen to every friend I have pour their heart out, or they may think I'm ignorant. Or, I have to please my partner, or they may leave me. Or, I have to stay in this job, even though I hate it because if I leave, I will be letting the team down. So on that list there, we can see the I have to or else. And as a suggestion, reflect on that. If you do have any addictions in your life or you're doing things that you don't necessarily want to do and find it difficult to give them up, have a reflect on that phrase, I have to or else. When a person is caught in the addiction, the one distinguishing factor that they very often will display is that they cannot give up what they are addicted to without feeling some form of pain. Now this form of pain could be also known as withdrawal. Keep in mind that image that you're let in bed, the room is very dark, and then somebody switches the light on. The mask is like the dark room, and the light could be the trauma underneath. If it's suddenly exposed to the eyes, it's too much to deal with. This is again why it's very important if you are going to work through an addiction of any type, take it step by step. Now, talking about that loss of freedom of choice, well, is this going to happen because while the mask addiction remains, a person will only choose the thing that they know stops the pain, or in all reality, it's the protector self. So if the protector cell forces the person to choose their mask, therefore it is suppressing the true self. And while we stay in our conditioned self, or the mask self, rather than our true self, it will control everything in our lives. It will control the amount of money you earn, 
It will control the people that you spend time with. It will control your addictions. It will control your coping mechanisms. It will control your emotions. In essence, it will control your life. But again, I just want to add one last thing before we move on. Even though I've just shared there that if we are in our mask, it will control so much about our lives. If the conditioned self is in action, it will suppress the true self. So we can either be our conditioned self or our true self, but we can't be both simultaneously. But again, even though when I've gone through that, Although it can sound really overwhelming, feeling that we might be trapped behind our mask, it is absolutely vital that you take this step by step, even though there's been many hours of this program so far. But one thing just to add before we move on from this particular section is that I know I've just shared that, that if we are living in our conditioned self or a mask self, it will be suppressing our true self. And yes, that's not enjoyable to hear. Nobody wants to hear that. We want to be our true self. We want to be free. But again, and I really do hope you hear this, this is not going to be a quick fix. But again, from myself who's gone through this process and understood it and tripped up many times and been conned and been manipulated, if you want to get the results... You have to reflect on your particular experience and work through it step by step. But if we take a person out there and they don't want to put in the time and the dedication to go through the process and they want it now, well, those are the exact people that the contricksters are looking for. And whether that is a contrickster who doesn't know what they're doing and it's all subconscious behind the scenes, or and unfortunately this clearly exists in the world, the contricksters who do know what they're doing. They do know that they are emotionally manipulating people. They are looking for extremely vulnerable people to sell their contracts to. I remember once many years ago, I went on a free two-day introductory course, and it was lame to say the least. But I'll always remember one of the people who was doing a presentation who said one of the most grim phrases I have ever heard. And he said, if you take out a loan from your bank to go on an upgraded course, which was two or three thousand pounds, I think, then that loan is an investment in yourself. So they were not telling people to go and take out a loan, but they were hinting that if they do take out a loan, i.e. put themselves in financial debt, then they were implying that if a person took out a loan to go on their upgraded course, then that was a good thing because they were investing in themselves. Now that is a blatant contract and extremely unprofessional. But one of the worst combinations that you can ever see is a contrickster, a vulnerable person and money. So just to summarise this module... If you are currently in a situation where you are subscribing to your mask, you are in your conditioned self because it's covering up something deeper within, you have two options. Option number one, you take the time to understand your particular situation. And if, for example, you choose to work through by yourself or you choose to work through with somebody else, again, do your research, then that is the time that you will invest in yourself to get long-term results. Or you could subscribe to the quick fix method and say, I don't want to take all that time. I want it now. Where there will be some happy, smiling quick fix guru clicking their fingers and saying, I can get your results yesterday. But one thing you have to keep in mind here is that you are responsible for your life. You can take either of those two options. It's your life and it is your decision. And I've been there myself. When I was going through the darkest years of my life, I wanted an end to my pain there and then. Of course, I didn't want to spend time reading all those books. Of course, I didn't want to spend the time going through self-reflection exercises, going to therapy, constantly journaling, constantly meditating, constantly setting goals. 
It was tiring. It required a lot of discipline and facing uncomfortable truths. But as I also mentioned to you, I spent 10 years caught in that quick fix guru world. And as I've shared with you, it didn't get me anywhere. It just masked over the problem. But as I also mentioned, although I didn't get any results, I was actually much worse off by subscribing to the quick fix masks. Keep in mind at all times, it's your life and it's your responsibility. Yes, putting in the work, putting in the dedication, putting in the time might not feel enjoyable. You could be in the same place that I was, physically exhausted, completely overwhelmed with anxiety. But it doesn't mean that you have to take action and read a thousand books in a day. Just start with one book and then build it up or download an app. Put something into your life each and every day. Like I say, positive thinking, using quotes, getting a goal folder. These can be very valuable techniques to start with. Yes, as we've mentioned, only doing these will not get permanent long-term results, but they can be a very powerful way to start. Okay, so we've now reached the end of module number 14, Are You Addicted? And again, this can be a very, very sensitive topic. If you are carrying an addiction in some way, shape and form in your life right now, and you are going to work through it to eventually let go of it, make sure you do your preparation. We're going to be covering different techniques when we go into the building the cocoon module. But I want you to keep that visual image in mind. You're led in bed in a dark room. If you suddenly let go of an addiction, it can be exactly the same as turning on a really bright light. And as we know, the first thing that you want to do is close your eyes and try and hide under the duvet. As a friend of mine once said, slowly, slowly wins the race. So stop the training now and go over all of the notes that you've made through this particular module and then cross-reference them with all of the prior modules as well. At this moment in time, you might not want to take action. It might be just that you observe everything first and then go back to take action. But always do what feels comfortable for you. So stop the training, review all of your notes, and then I look forward to seeing you in module number 15, which is prepare for the cocoon.